everyone, it's Tuesday, January 24th. I'm Curtis Hollister and you're watching 52 Week Low, the show that provides insights and opinions on the companies at or around their 52 week trading low. Today we're talking about two picks from the energy sector. The first is NRG Energy, trading under the symbol NRG. And the second is Bill Barrett Corp, trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol BBG. Joining me today is Dana Blankenhorn, a top, contributing, a top contributor on Seeking Alpha within the technology and energy sectors. Dana, welcome to 52 Week Low. Good to be here. Dana, before we get started, Giants or Patriots? Patriots. <laughs> Perfect. So we're gonna be talking about uh, NRG Energy. This is a company, and then we'll talk a little bit about Bill Barrett Corp, focusing on NRG Energy. These guys um, have kind of are a little bit of a different model. They're a, a wholesaler. They seem to be doing every kind of all things Scottish and pizza of the energy sector. You know, they've got solar, they've got renewables, they've got traditionals. You know, what's your initial take on this company and why it's trading at its 52 week low? Well, they're the, um, they have the highest earnings per share growth rate among independent power producers. And that's their problem. They're an independent power producer. Everybody in that area of the business uh, is, is hurting right now because power prices are relatively low. NRG is different from the other guys in that much of its, uh, the power that it produces is uh, from solar and wind and some biomass, and uh, as opposed to natural gas or coal or something like this. Um, you may know them, uh, if you know them, uh, the Houston Texans Stadium holds uh, is, is has one of their brand names on it. The Alliance is one of their brand names. The other brand name that you may have heard of is Green Mountain Energy, uh, which which puts you in mind of Vermont, but this is actually a Texas company. So what it seems to me that they're doing, you're looking at kind of their chart here. Right now they're trading at around 1625 or sorry, 1650. You know, they've traded as much as twenty-five and a half dollars in the last fifty-two weeks approximately. Looks like they do a transaction to buy another solar company. They get a, a lift, and then within the next month, they get another fall. Then they do another transaction to buy another solar company. Then they do another fall. You know what's causing what's causing the downward pressure on this stock um, uh, right after these these transactions? Is this just normal trading activity? Uh, no, the the main reason for the falls is simply the prices. Uh, prices for independently produced power are pretty low right now. Uh, the reason for that is that the price of natural gas is so incredibly low that those folks, those who are using natural gas, actually have a major advantage in the market. NRG is not using natural gas. NRG is basically a developer. Uh, they develop properties, wind farms, solar farms. Uh, they often sell these on. And lately, they've been selling a lot of them on to a company called Mid-American Energy. You may not have never have heard of them, but you can trade on them under the symbol BRK.A. In other words, their part of Berkshire Hathaway. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. So obviously, there's a lot of guys kind of under this, but behind the curtain, underneath the scenes, buying up these renewable fuels, or renewable energy producers, you know, becoming a bigger player without everyone kind of knowing it. You know, the idea here is there going to be a major move on government policy, do you think, or does that even matter? I don't think policy necessarily matters because what Mid-American has done, what Green Valley, or what Green Mountain did, and what Mid-American is doing, is creating a private subsidy that uh, they call Renewable Energy Certificate. Uh, the Super Bowl this year, for instance, is going to be green. It's going to be carbon neutral. Why is it going to be carbon neutral, you ask? Well, it's because they're buying the NFL is buying energy, green energy certificates from Green from Green Mountain that are used to sort of, in an accounting way, uh, take some of the energy that they're producing from a wind farm uh, that they own, mm -hmm. and that you know, okay, you bought this particular energy, you paid a premium price, you have the certificate showing you paid the premium price, therefore you can call it green. And lots of lots of companies now, lots of brands, Starbucks, Coles are all kind of wanting to link their brand to buying energy that's renewable, buying energy that's environmentally friendly, buying en energy that's kind of important for their customers. Well, you just named, their, you just named Green Mountain's customers. Coles and Starbucks, 
all these companies that are going around saying, oh, we bought, we have green energy, we are carbon neutral. That's the business model. They buy these certificates and then they say they're carbon neutral because they're accounting for the solar or wind power that these projects are generating. And they're paying in the price of that certificate the difference in cost between, say, getting it from the grid normally and getting it through these other means. And so um, the other thing that, that, that they're dabbling in now is the um, ethanol or cellulosic ethanol. What's this, this has been a big promise for a long time, but not a, nobody's really kind of uh, got a major production facility that's, that, you know, that's, that's really kind of making money or, or has a line of sight to actually being a profitable business at the end of the day. What, what's the story behind this? Well, it's not really material to NRG's results, but they do have uh, a business that uh, they've invested in called Cool Planet Biofuel. Uh, they've just uh, demonstrated what they call negative carbon gasoline. The waste from the production process can actually sequester carbon. Uh, now, they've got other investors besides NRG, Google Ventures, mm -hmm. ConocoPhillips, BP, GE. All of these companies are really nice to have in the Rolodex when you want to do another deal. Gotcha. And that's very important NRG. So uh, having other business partners to buy the projects that it's developing and resell the power that it's creating is key to their success. So it looks like this is kind of a good buying opportunity for these for for this company from the point of view if you want to align with one of the companies that once energy prices start going up, these guys are going to benefit not only from that wave but from the the bigger kind of white space trend of people wanting to buy renewable energy. Exactly, uh, they are not subsidized by the government; they're subsidized by the market. Mm -hmm. Well. I mean, it's one of those things, I think we've talked a little bit about this in other conversations, you know, people are choosing to do this. They're willing to pay a little bit more for the, you know, uh, fair trade coffee. They're pay, looking to pay a little bit more for, you know, re renewable X, Y, Z for the, you know, the uh, recycled uh, Crocs, whatever it is, people are making that choice en masse more and more, especially within the North American market. And it's true for both uh, individuals who they put a solar panel on their roof and big corporations. Absolutely. Let's change our focus now um, to uh, Bill Barrett Corp. You know, these guys have a little bit of a different model. They're, they're focused on oil and gas, um, pr primarily within, uh, all, I think all their operations are within the states, are they not? Uh, yeah, they are primarily playing in the Rocky Mountain oil patch. Uh, this one really takes me back in time because I actually started my Houston Business Journal in the late 1970s, covering folks like this, uh, covering guys who were going around into the oil patch looking to do deals. Well, they're announcing, and they seem to be kind of like continuing to reinforce their their uh, production forecast. They're looking at a 20 to 25 percent production increases. Yet their stock is not is is trading around its uh, thirty dollars or it's twenty eight forty four right now. Um, but it's trading yeah, as high as a new low today. They actually hit a new low today, and the reason is exactly what you say. They're producing. What are they producing? They're producing natural gas. Mm -hmm. What's the price of natural gas? It's about half what it was two years ago. This provides a great tailwind to the general economy, but for somebody who's producing natural gas, it's a bad thing. Gotcha, gotcha. And what's their mix of uh, uh, oil to natural gas or from a revenue breakdown? Do you, do you have? Uh, from a revenue breakthrough, it, it, it's... It's base. It's just about all. It's just about all gas. Okay. They're going into uh, fields that have been previously played, and they are using hydraulic fracturing, otherwise known as fracking, to crack the rocks deep under the earth and capture the gas that comes out as a result. Gotcha, gotcha. So again, this is another company. When, when natural gas starts to turn around, all of a sudden they're going to start to turn around. What about their cost of production? Do these guys have any kind of market advantage over the other players within the space? That is going to be a big uh, bone of contention once prices do start to go around. Uh, and uh, the thing about oil and gas production is you have a lot of sunk costs right up front. But then once you get the production going, the incremental costs for each additional MCF that you produce, for each barrel of oil you produce, is very minimal. 
Uh, so to, the question is, can you get the capital to, to pay those sunk costs to get the access to that resource? And once you pay off that capital, once you pay off mostly a loan, uh, then the incremental additional costs of pulling it out are, are practically zero. But there is such a glut now that yesterday, one of the largest frackers, uh, Chesapeake Energy, which despite the name is also based in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, they announced that they were going to cut back on their spending, cut back on their development and drilling, and try and produce only as much gas this year as they produced last year. The purpose of that is very simply to raise the price and it did temporarily. The question now is, is that higher price sustainable? Will the other players kind of play OPEC with uh, Chesapeake and say, okay, I'm, I'm not going to increase my production either. And if they can do that, then they can make the price increase hold. So a lot of analysts question whether they can. Well, a lot of the analysts have a pretty strong rating on this company. You've got like out of the, what, the 11 or, 11 or 12 analysts that are, are covering this, Ten of them have it as a buy. Yeah, they all they all like it. Uh, they all anticipate that uh, they're going to continue to find gas. Now, you should understand there is a slight political risk in that uh, the Rhone Valley, which is one of the areas that they're trying to frack, uh, there's a lot of environmentalist uh, pressure against their acting. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a lot of uh, in uh, liberal media uh, indicating that you know these guys are really evil. They're about as evil as anybody else in the oil patch. Uh, but because of, they are in a relatively pristine area and there is a risk in fracking of uh, things yeah. coming to the surface. And also the hydrogeological oil. elements of influencing right. the water table. Exactly. Yeah. Right. There was a blow up of a Chesapeake well last year in what's called the Marcellus Shale, which is actually like eastern Pennsylvania. And... Um, that was a, a major event. It happened, I believe, March or April of last year. And uh, that put things uh, back for a lot of folks and, of course, raised the political risk, raised the costs for everybody. And that reduces the profit margin. Yeah, the average target that I think most analysts have is around $48 a share right now. So these guys are a lot, uh, you know, big time underwater from that point. You know, obviously, you this is. If you believe the analysts, if you believe the analysts, this is a place to put some money because uh, they are at about half of where the analysts say they should be. Yeah. Now, what, what, you've got to be really careful. If the analysts suddenly turn on the stock and say, well, it's not really a $48 stock, maybe it's only a $30 stock, you know, you're, sitting on, you're sitting on your position. You better be ready to blow it out if the analysts change their mind. Yeah, and obviously just a, the, a couple of right moves within, within the, the market price for gas is going to move the stock probably pretty pretty. But the real story here... The real story here is the natural gas glut. There is a huge glut of natural gas in the North American market. In fact, the Energy Department just this last week put out a new estimate for the energy supplies and demand in this country, and they indicated that this country, the United States, will be basically uh, even on production and supply, uh, on production and, and drawdowns on natural gas, self-sufficient in 2016, just four years away. Uh, and if we continue to have these kinds of prices, um, it's a huge tailwind for everybody in the economy. Yeah, exactly. All right, Dana, thank you so much for your time. If you'd like more information on uh, Dana Blankenhorn, you can visit his profile on Seeking Alpha. If you'd like more videos from public companies or industry experts, please visit InvestorChannel.tv. You're watching 52 Week Low, and I'm Curtis Hollister. Thanks for your time.